Okay, so shifting gears here, uh, I want to go back to look at our webmaster tools. We had Bing, Toolbox, we had Google Search Console, and we had Google Analytics. We tried to set up as many as we could of those last week. If you were managed to set them up, great. If not, I will show you examples. And if you still want to try to set it up on the lab time, uh, at the end of the day, we'll try to set you up. But we're going to get back into that. So if you're able to log, go ahead and log into, let's do Bing first. If you've got your Bing toolbox set up, uh, you can go back to the address bing.com slash toolbox. <coughs> Put it in the notes here. I'm suddenly forgetting the address for Search Console. Analytics is uh, google.com slash analytics. They changed the name of that one, so I forgot the address for it at the moment, but we'll get to it in a bit. Let's go to the one on Bing. So if you did set it up, you can go ahead and log in. I'll, sh I'll log in and show you examples of these clients' data, how to interpret it, what it means, and what's its purpose. Short answer here. Uh, these tools give you data to make decisions. Is it working that I'm paying for Facebook? What is the most popular page on my site? Where is my traffic coming from? Should I continue to tweet? Questions like that and more can be answered in your analytics accounts because it's data. It will tell you all of this information. Where is your traffic coming from? What's the most popular page on your site? If I am paying, let's say if I'm being active for free, if I'm being active on Facebook and Twitter, which of them should I keep up to date more often? because I've only got a limited amount of time to do this stuff, so which one should I focus my efforts on? Well, you'll get that information about that in the accounts. So I'm going to sign in. Okay, so signing in here, there's real data from different clients. And as I said, we've got these um, we've got these examples of columns. Oh, that's odd that all of these say not verified. Hmm. Gotta look into that. Anyway, we've got uh, examples here and just picking one randomly at the top here. Here's some data to look at. It gives it to you in a percentage, but it will give you in the exact data once you once you click on your site. As I said, I work with different clients, so in mine I've got a certain login, and then I've got these various clients set up in the account. You can give access to the client to only their data. Of course, we don't want one client to look at the other companies, especially when you know if you get hired by the competition and you're doing work for both clients. So in this case, just uh, general data here, page down, arrow red, up arrow green. So clicks from search is 33% down from the last time period, 30 days. Appeared in search, this client on uh, Bing search results have appeared more times, eight percentage points, the exact value we can see in a moment. 
new content has been added to the site. So um, it's crawled new stuff and it's added <coughs> it to the index. The, uh, the full values, when you actually click, will be something like that. So in this time period of 30 days, uh, these last 30 days, people clicked on the result twice compared to last month three times. Okay, so 33% is one less clicks. So you see the full actual data. You see the uh, appearances here. So it went from uh, 23 times wow. appearing or people were searching and this client appeared 23 times on search last month and then this month 25 times so that's an 8% increase. New content has been added. No errors in the site. The new content has been added to the index. Um, mentioned sitemaps being important previously, so these were submitted. And um, this is what it found. These are the various pages of the site. All of these details we'll, we'll look at in a moment. These are keywords. What are some keywords that people are using to um, to find this to find the site? Yes. Is it is that a specific uh, screen that it's asking you about? Yeah, me? I, 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 Let I, me just I, take a quick look at yeah. it to refresh. Okay. Most likely, it's going to be the business. all of this information over here um, let's see what would be a useful one um, the the search keywords so you get a quick sense of the data on the right side and then the deep data on the left side so just to check one right here see all 13 this is the same as if I were clicking on reports uh, search keywords so these are uh, keywords that are coming from people searching on Bing and Yahoo. So as we said, back in the 90s, Yahoo was the dominant search engine and had like 98% usage. Uh, now they've dipped down quite a lot. They're probably like at 2%. And Google is the biggest one. They're like 68, 70%. And Bing is second place with like 20, 25, 29, around there somewhere. So people using those search engines, this is the data that this is collecting. Since this client has been set up for a while, it has data. If you don't have a uh, very much amount of time that this is set up, you won't see very much of this data. So in the last seven days, these are some keywords that people had searched for. I'll keep it on 30. OK, so people search for this keyword. And um, this client appeared five times when people searched that keyword. And there was one click on the search result to go to the client. Uh, that's a CTR of 20%, right? Dividing one by the other. On average, if people were searching that keyword, this client appeared at around uh, result number five. Right, there's 10 results per page. This was number five. On average, in the amount of time, five and a half. Between five and six. Position five, position six. So this is a great screen to kind of help you think about 
keywords to use on your site. This, uh, this client is about, uh, yes, but what it's about is it's a restaurant that serves an interesting Mexican food uh, from Mexico City. It's um, tortas de chilaquiles and more. So chilaquiles are a traditional Mexican dish, which is basically fried tortilla chips in a variety of sauces with toppings, beans or egg and stuff. And so there is this, which is that dish in a torta, in a sandwich. So it's, it's a popular street food in Mexico City. And uh, they have it here, it's a truck, it's a food truck. They drive to different locations and they sell the product. So right here, here's one with you know egg. There's that egg or cheese, but there it is, and you can read all about what they are and, and such. So the uh, the client or us as the web marketers have an idea of what the keywords might be for this particular client. But don't discount what you see here because you might see variations in such traditional chilaquiles. Even though there were no clicks from that result, this could be a possible keyword that I could try to use on the website or in Twitter or on a Facebook, posting something on Facebook with a picture with a link to the site with that keyword. So in all the analytics sites, you get examples of keywords that have gotten some result for you. You need to compile and use those keywords in your online presence. And as I said, your online presence is your website, your Facebook, your Twitter or Instagram, your newsletter, your blog, wherever you are online, you need to use these keywords. Use them in your about page. Use them as hashtags. Use them in Facebook, etc. So, example tweet. I'm seeing uh, okay, history of Chilaquiles. Example tweet. Ever wonder about the history of chilaquiles at our food truck you can learn while you munch and then a link back to the website where the locations of the truck are going to be at hashtag you know, Mexican food and then attach a picture. So that would be something that you go on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, whatever, on, on social media. But it's got that keyword that I determined here, people are finding my site. They're not maybe necessarily clicking yet, but I'm finding some keywords. So I'm putting a keyword there of search. Um, a link back to the website, driving traffic back to the website. A hashtag further so that people are searching for on Twitter, Facebook, and such. They're searching for that uh, for that keyword, that uh, that topic, Mexican food. And then I'm attaching a picture showing the food. So that'd be a sort of a tweet that I would do for a client. Um, that'd be like a template that you can think about doing for your for yourself. Mr. Campos, one one moment, Christian. So the, the analytics you can give you the exact search term, even though the search engine is kind of picking up chilaquila history and history of chilaquila, it kind of means the same thing. Mm -hmm. But it's giving 
Very specific, very uh, variations and, and powerful results because I, I don't know, I had it in a certain idea, but then I'm not thinking in someone else's shoes. There's some examples over here where the word is misspelled. You know, they put an extra E in there, chile quiles, instead of chila, chile quiles. So, uh, it, yeah, a lot of data here. I could discount some of them, like I wouldn't do this one, I wouldn't do the misspelling. I don't want to propagate the misspelling. But right here, who invented chilaquiles? Oh, there's no answer to that, but that's something that could be uh, incorporated. And then right here, in, in, with Mexican history. So a lot of great information to glean from this. This is something that could go in the... Is it like an article or a sentence? It, mostly, both of those could work, but you would often think about it perhaps as an article, as a blog post, because a lot of what this can guide you or guide the people searching for is a page full of this information. So a blog post. We can do another example right here. Example blog post. This one's an interesting one here. Uh, where did I see it? The one of who invented. That could be the title of the blog post. Title. Who invented chilaquiles? So spell it out for real, and you know, it's the title of an article. And then subject, 300 words with pictures on the history Chilaquiles. Written on your website in the blog section. Then promoted on social media. I've, I've written it on the website, but I'm also going to uh, promote it on on Facebook so people can read it. Maybe a little preview, a couple of sentences of it on Facebook, but then a link back to the blog on, on the website. Yeah. What does the view pages mean? Uh, view serve. Uh, this should show the... Um, what's the page? Uh, following pages were served for the subject keyword. Th these are where the. I have to double check to make sure, but in this page on the client's website, this is the page that popped up for them when people searched. So that gives you a of what pages are actually There's another screen where it kind of shows that a little bit more obviously. But this is saying when people search for this keyword, the Bing result showed you might want to click on this, which is the client site Chilaquiles history tradition. So a blog post right here, history and tradition. So it's that blog post. But did it scrape that information from the website to bring it in? Yeah, that, that word is also in there. You know, the um, that, that word of history. You're gonna see it. Well it's in the title, it's in the hat, it's in the keyword. It's uh, it is in the content also that helps you there's traditional. So it helps you um, it helps that page get found. Chilaquiles are said to have been first brought to America in a cookbook by Encarnacion Piñedo, the Spanish cookbook in 1898. So there's, uh, and then of course, thought to be, because you know everything that's more than 100 years old, can you really believe it? So, um, how many of you did manage to set up Bing or Google uh, analytics previously. Last time, a few people. Okay, so if you haven't, 
uh, looked at these screens, you should, because you're going to get a lot of data. And again, the longer it, it exists, the better. Here, this one, I'm going to change the time period to six months. So within the last six months, you might get a different sort of a sense of keywords. Some might appear uh, that didn't appear before. So even these complete misspellings and such. And then you see that data. Let's see. Uh, anything to see here? There's the mobile friendly test. You can go to to that, and uh, you can put in your address. You can even do a page by page. I'm just doing the home page here. It's going to analyze it to to see how good it is with mobile because nowadays uh, being mobile friendly obviously is quite important. So that might take a moment, but this is uh, what we can look at for um, for Bing. Uh, let's take one more break, and then when we come back, we will do the um, the other search engines as well. They're all going to be very similar to this, but with just different screens. They're going to present their data in different ways, but they're going to have this ability to research keywords, to check popular pages. Uh, it'll tell you if there's broken links and such. All right, so it's 11:45. Uh, we'll take a break until 11:55, and then we'll come back and look at the other search engines.